I'ma crush it. I'm Anthony Walker, world traveler and your host of Unsung Pittsburgh's premier nonprofit online news magazine show. Today, we're putting new studio tech to use and staying out of the cold while we're at it. But while we're keeping warm, some don't have a place to do the same. That's why in this edition of Unsung, we take a tour of Shepherd's Heart and see firsthand how this valuable safety net helps our community. We also hear from the playwright behind Breath and Imagination at City Theater. But first, let's check in with the latest happenings from our area nonprofits. On January 25, 2013, the United States Department of Education released new guidance to schools and school systems throughout the nation that receive federal aid about the requirements of providing quality sports opportunities for students with disabilities. While the guidance does not actually make new laws, it does identify the responsibilities that schools and school systems have under Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. This guidance aims not just to protect rights, but to promote unity and has instantly given inclusive sports more relevancy and focus in schools. The guidance also suggests that all students, not just those who join a sports team, should be exposed to the health, fitness, and nutritional benefits of physical activities. Special Olympics Pennsylvania can help schools get their equitable sports programming up and running. More information can be found at the address on your screen. Bricolage takes its popular Midnight Radio Junior on the road to Washington County Middle Schools thanks to a generous grant from the Benedum Foundation. This collaboration will support the 8th grade social studies curriculum and will be directly inspired by the history of the Civil War as well as the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. This series of workshops began during the first week of March with a live performance of a Midnight Radio Junior style production for the school's 8th grade students. Every Tuesday, March 19th through May 7th, Bricolage will present a workshop that explores the diverse aspects of performing from script writing and performing to audio technology and visual graphics. Building upon the district's curriculum, the in-classroom workshops will focus on exploring what the students are already learning. Jeffrey Carpenter, Bricolage's artistic director, and Tammy Dixon, Bricolage's producing artistic director, will lead the workshops while enlisting the help of special guest teaching artists. It's nice to know when you get lost, there's a shepherd in the city to help you out. Unsung was happy to tour Shepherd's Heart and find out the story about this organization. Shepherd's Heart Veterans Home, we have a 15-bed transitional housing program where many of our veterans can stay upwards of 12 months to 15, 16 months. When they leave here, uh, normally they will have their own place, being able to sustain themselves. Uh, we have a very high success rate, close to 80% of those that come into our program, veterans, uh, succeed meeting their own personal objectives and goals and being able to, to make it on their own. The people that have graduated from here are also in the VA healthcare system in that um, a lot of them are continuing um, to be productive members in society and trying to teach others. My wife and I moved to Pittsburgh in early June of 1993. I began walking the streets, going under bridges here in Pittsburgh uh, that summer. Uh, and over the course of the next uh, year and a half, two years, I was just stunned by all the, not just the numbers of homeless individuals, but homeless veterans. And so, it literally, our first Sunday service was in late August of 1995. And then in 2005, we were able to purchase our current building and in 2007, we were able to open up uh, the transitional housing for homeless veterans on the second floor. We have a homeless drop-in center open seven days a week in the mornings during the winter, then six days a week during the rest of the year. And we'll see anywhere from 40 to 50, upwards of 100 homeless individuals, of which probably 20 to 30 are homeless veterans still living on the streets. So on a daily, weekly basis, we'll see anywhere from uh, five to 600 uh, during the course of a week where we feed uh, all the homeless. We have them breakfast, we have laundry, we have showers, we have uh, counseling, drug and alcohol, we have morning prayer, individual prayer as well as corporate prayer, as well as we have referral to drug and alcohol counseling programs or recovery programs. So we have a free uh, shuttle bus service. We provide transportation, free transportation for the homeless and the poor. There's the VA homeless health care uh, uh, outreach teams that come down and work with our veterans. We work with uh, Operation Safety Net, uh, which is a medical outreach team through Mercy Behavioral. Western Psych provides uh, on-site uh, psychiatric 
Um, we have services from uh, Sunday services where we work with 150 organizations, 100 plus churches of all denominations uh, that provide food on Sunday nights and donations. Uh, we, we receive an estimate of between 100, uh, 1 1.5 million to $2 million worth of gift in kind donations a year just to feed and house and, and provide services for the homeless. In Allegheny County, the numbers range, uh, homeless number, uh, homeless individuals in general, we'll see about 12 to 1,300 on, on any given night, but we'll have easily double, if triple that, we'll experience homelessness. Of that, usually 20 to 30 percent are veterans. Back in um, 2000, I wound up coming into the VA healthcare system program. Uh, I myself was homeless. Uh, and that I ran into some problems with some drugs and alcohol and by God's grace and mercy, I was able to be able to get a house, which I never thought that I would be able to do um, through Pastor Mike. Uh, we own our duplex. Uh, on the one side we stay and on the other side, we rent to veterans. I just feel that uh, the staff's here for us all the time, and uh, me being by myself here in these one-man rooms, uh, it just uh, gives you a lot to think about why you're here in the first place, uh, how I sort of lost everything. And, uh, each day that I'm here, uh, I get stronger. Uh, I guess I'm here due to probably more financial issues. Um, this place has been really great to give uh, a relief in the stress that would probably come along with that and a chance to you know get your mind back together and you know to get pointed in the right direction and because of the help here uh, I will be uh, going to a, a job in about uh, one week from now and uh, I also have an apartment that's uh, with the help of the VA uh, you, know, I, you know I can move out and you know get my life going again. I mean the people here are really nice to me uh, people that uh, I'm getting better on computer which is one of my weaknesses and uh, I feel do good here. I, I like going to church here I got a Mennonite church I go to down in Swissville and uh, it's a good place for me right now because I'm weak in ways and you know good place for me to get my strength back together. If Shepherd's Heart was not in existence we would not have one of the very few uh, early morning drop-in centers uh, to help the homeless, the entire homeless population, uh, seven days a week. We would not have the severe weather shelter, one of the only two in, in Allegheny County. There will be a lot more people out on the streets. Resources that we connect them up with seems to help in the, or sustain. The crime rate would be higher, the jail rate would be higher. They know that this here is a safe place. Our funding is provided in, in uh, a vast number of uh, different uh, resources. On our Sunday offering is about 20 to 25 dollars, mainly nickels and pennies and dimes and quarters. And so we, our Sunday offering, because we are a church, is very, very little. And so our, our support comes from uh, a wide number of grants, private individuals, private businesses, churches, uh, as well as the federal government, the, the, the VA and our programs. Shepherd's Heart, you could go to our website, www.shepheart.org or shepheart.com, either one. And it'll take you to our website that talks about our homeless veteran program as well as the larger program of what we do with Shepherd's Heart. Um, you can uh, give a donation, PayPal online, as well as it gives you an opportunity of all the things that we do. You can call the church office, 412. 281-1305 to find out more information. Your church could be involved or your, your community organization could be involved. You know, the winter is still going on. Uh, the severe winter uh, season uh, for the uh, program itself ended uh, March 15th. Uh, but the weather, severe weather is continuing. And so any donations for food, uh, coffee, sugar, blankets, cold gear, could be donated to us, brought to us, that would be wonderful uh, just because the, the winter season is continuing to go on. Any donations you would give, we would be able to uh, uh, put away as resources in, in a storage for next fall also.
Daniel Beatty brings breath and imagination to City Theater on Southside. He tells us the story of Rowland Hayes, who journeyed from the dirt paths of Georgia to European stages, becoming the first African-American classic vocalist to be heard around the world. Let's take a look at it in this week's Pittsburgh on Video contribution. Breath and Imagination is the story of Roland Hayes, the first African-American classical vocalist of world renown. This man came from the community of his mother just post-slavery. He's the son of a slave who sang before kings and queens. Um, and at the heart of it really is a love story between a mother and a son. I'm thrilled about the cast we have for Breath and Imagination. About six years ago, it was my mother's 60th birthday, and so I brought her into New York to see some plays. And one of the ones we saw was Dessa Rose that was playing at Lincoln Center. And in that cast was Keisha Lewis, who uh, was singing a role in that show. And when she sang, she just had such heart and such passion. I like felt it in my body, I felt it in my core. And I leaned over to my mother and I said, I'm gonna write something for her. And then we also needed an actor singer who could really communicate the essence and the heart of Roland Hayes, who was a charismatic but really loving man um, with a real sensitivity in his singing. And I had heard Jubilant Sykes uh, CDs before and seen some recordings of his music. And so when we learned that he had some interest in the piece, um, I knew it was going to be perfect casting. <laughs> classical music in it, it's got spirituals, and then it's got some original songs that I've created. On April 5th, as part of Unblurred, the Irma Freeman Center will open Safe Light, a father-son multimedia collaboration between Nick and Dennis Childers, exhibiting digital prints and an experimental video installation. It's part of the monthly First Friday Gallery Crawl on Penn Avenue. There will be snacks, drinks, and live music on view through May 3rd. For more details, visit the link on your screen. For the first time in over a decade, Pittsburgh's wide open mayoral primary puts us at a crossroads, at a critical point in our rebirth. But what are our candidates' stands on issues most relevant to neighborhoods, the lifeblood of the city? How will they support efficiently and transparently neighborhood revitalization and catalyze investment in them? The Union Project will host a debate on April 11th to find out. Candidates will be asked a series of questions, including the use of city funds and recourses, issues regarding transit, bike and pedestrian development, transparency and development, public safety, leadership, and more. For more information, please go to unionproject.org. You might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles after our stories. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter, at PGH on Video, or hashtag UnsungPGH. As always, thanks for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on PittsburghUnVideo.org. And hey, now we're on iTunes. We've had the video version on there for a while, but now you can get audio for On The Go. Got a nonprofit you think is cool? Let us know why, and you might just find yourself on Unsung. You can email Christopher at whitlatchc at pghfdn.org. Remember, there's only one person in the world like you, and people can like you just the way you are. Happy birthday, Mr. Rogers. As always, I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. So I 
I said I'ma crush it Call me the golden boy cause it shine whenever I touch it Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally Actually, the whole hood after me Masterpiece, I outran a pace car Any 